PCIe 4.0 storage first came out five years ago and was technically succeeded by PCIe 5.0 in 2022, but really right now is the golden age for PCIe 4.0 SSDs. That's mainly because the market is full of countless models that range greatly in price, performance, capacity, and physical size. While there are only a handful of companies that manufacture the NAND chips and controllers that go into SSDs, the technology has matured to the point where it's relatively cheap and pretty much any brand can get into the market if they want to. Most companies just buy chips and controllers made by firms like Micron and Fizon, then they put that on a circuit board, and then they sell it at the price that they want to sell it at. That's why in the PCI 4.0 market, there's lots of brands that you probably have never heard of before. That brings us to the 07000 SSD made by Orico, a company that is more into making storage accessories rather than storage itself uh, and they sent in their one terabyte model of the 07000 for us to review gotta say kind of a fan of the gold coloring uh, you don't see most ssds go for that uh, but but I, I like it personally. Not that you're uh, too likely to see that because you're probably putting this under a heat sink. The 07000 one terabyte is rated for 7,000 megabytes per second in reading performance and 6,500 megabytes per second in writing performance, which is fairly good for a PCI 5.0 drive. The absolute limit for NVMe SSDs operating on the PCI 4.0 interface is 8,000 megabytes per second or eight gigabytes per second, but that's only theoretical. The actual limit is closer to 7,500 megabytes per second, which the 07000 is close to hitting. To achieve those speeds, the 07000 supports TLC NAND chips made by YMTC, one of the bigger Chinese storage manufacturers, and its controller is made by Maxiotech, another Chinese company. It doesn't have any onboard DRAM, but instead uses a host memory buffer, which means it takes some of the system memory and uses that in place of DRAM. What's interesting is that this SSD apparently first came out in 2022, according to Tech Power Up, but Orco is only now sending samples to the media, including Silicon Insights. The 07000 apparently first launched at $60, but now it's going for $70, which is still a pretty competitive price for a high-end PCI 4.0 SSD. However, Orco isn't the only company that makes an SSD out of YMTC NAND chips and a Maxiotech controller. In fact, there are multiple SSDs out there that use this exact same combination of chips from YMTC and Maxiotech, namely Team Group's MP44 and Lexar's NM790. There's also a few other SSDs out there, but as far as I can tell, they're not really in stock and their prices aren't that competitive. The game with these sorts of SSDs is really priced rather than performance, because if you can get the exact same SSD from a brand that's selling it for less, then why would you buy it from a brand that's selling it for more? It doesn't make any sense. So we'll see if the 07000 is a good alternative to top end name brand SSDs and if it offers this hardware cheaper than other companies. Although Intel's new Core Ultra 200S series has technically replaced last gen 14th gen CPUs, we're still using our LGA 1700 test bench for SSD testing rather than our new LGA 1851 test bench. This is because SSDs actually run on Air Lake CPUs significantly worse than on 14th gen CPUs. It's unclear if that can be patched or if this is just one of Air Lake's natural limitations, but either way, we're continuing to use the LGA 1700 test bench for now. Anyways, the LGA 1700 test bench is equipped with the Core i9 1400K ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite motherboard, 32GB of DDR5 clocked at 5600MHz, and Corsair's H170i liquid cooler. For comparison, we tested the 07000 against Seagate's Firecuda 530R and Corsair's MP600 Pro and H, two top-end PCI 4.0 SSDs from two well-established brands. We also tested Seagate's PCI 5.0 drive, the Firecuda 540, for additional comparison. Anyways, let's look at the testing data now. First up, we have the 3 Mark storage benchmark, which tests gaming-related workloads like loading saves, creating saves, OBS recording, and so on. This is a benchmark that benefits from being good in basically every aspect of storage performance. Predictably, the 540 is out ahead of the other three drives, but the 07000 practically ties the MP600 Pro and H for second place. It's a hair ahead of the 530R2, a good start for Orico. Next up is Crystal Disk Mark, a synthetic SSD benchmark application that tests raw horsepower. This specific test from Crystal Disk Mark benchmarks sequential reading and writing performance with a low Q depth. The 07000 has a much more balanced mix of reading and writing performance compared to the other PCI 4.0 drives. It's a little slower in reads versus the 530R and MP600 Pro and H, but outperforms both in writing by a significant margin. Overall, that's good performance, even if it's not clearly in first place. This is the same sequential test, but with a higher Q depth. The 07000 once again loses in reads, but this time its writing performance doesn't really compensate for it. The overall performance is still fine, but the 07000 is definitely worse off. In the random low Q depth test, the 07000 doesn't do amazingly. Writes were pretty decent, ahead of both the 530R and the MP600 Pro and H, but reads were the worst of the bunch. With an extremely high Q depth though, the 07000 ends up with 
reads not too far behind the 530R, the fastest drive in this benchmark, and has the best riding performance of the entire group, ahead of even the 540. We configured Disk Bench to be a simultaneous reading and writing test. Each SSD was loaded with the Witcher 3 game files, and then had to copy and paste those files into another folder. Unsurprisingly, our more premium SSDs coped with the test better than the 07000, which wasn't slow but wasn't fast either. In the official Final Fantasy Dawn Trail benchmark, we can see that the 07000 has slower load times than the 540 and the MP6 Pro and H, but is only about half a second off. The 530R meanwhile took nearly twice the amount of time to load each part of the benchmark, which is a particularly bad result. Finally, we have Iometer, which we configured to hammer each SSD with a constant write operation. Additionally, we filled up each SSD to one of three amounts, 10%, 50%, and 90%. The more an SSD is filled up, the worse writing performance gets, but some SSDs are better at coping with these conditions than others. Here in the 10% fill test, we can see that our PCI 4.0 SSDs remain steady for the whole test, with the 530R on top, the MP600 Pro and H in the middle, and the 07000 at last. The 540 hit much higher speeds thanks to being a PCI 5.0 drive, but we can see past the three minute mark, it started showing inconsistent performance, which happened due to thermal throttling. And here are the averages for each SSD. The 07000 was a decent bit behind the other SSDs, but its performance was still acceptable. After cranking up the fill rate to 50%, the 07000's performance just plummets a dozen seconds into the test. Some SSDs just don't do well at all in writes when lots of capacity is taken up, and the 07000 is one of those. By contrast, the 530R and MP600 Pro and H do much better. They only see a performance drop about a minute or so into the test, and they don't decline nearly as bad as the 07000. The 540 is in a different league entirely. On average, the 07000 mustered just 146 megabytes per second in writes, which is only competitive with hard drives. The 530R was 10 times faster. However, I will stress that this is a very extreme synthetic benchmark. The only way you'll see this in real life is by writing a bunch of stuff to the 07000 for a while. So if you're moving a bunch of game files to an 07000 for instance, it might take a while, but that's a bit of an edge case. Not much is different for our SSDs when we filled them up to 90% capacity, except the MP600 Pro and H overtakes the 530R a bit. The 07000 is still incredibly slow. This time, it's the MP600 Pro and H that's 10 times faster than the 07000, though the 530R isn't far off. While the 07000 doesn't do well in iometer in respect to performance, it's the leader in heat and power. It didn't even touch 50 degrees, while the 530R hit 70 Celsius exactly, and the MP600 Pro and H capped out at 63. The 540, despite being installed under a larger heat sink than the PCI 4.0 drives were, hit 80 degrees pretty quickly and started thermal throttling. PCI 4.0 SSDs, especially the 07000, really don't need active cooling, unlike PCI 5.0 drives. By no means is the 07000 a top performer among PCI 4.0 SSDs, but with its $70 price tag, it doesn't really need to be, and it's not that far off from top-end drives like the 530R and the MP600 Pro and H. Plus, the 07000 is a pretty cool SSD, which I appreciate when so many other drives get really, really hot. Sustained writing performance was the only significant weakness for the 07000, and it's a big one, unfortunately. Sustained writes aren't really a very common thing for an SSD to experience, but when they do happen, it'll be really slow in the 07000. With the 530R 1TB and MP600 Pro and H 1TB going for $100 and $83 respectively, the 07000 1TB is a fair bit cheaper, and with its slightly less overall performance, it's a pretty good deal. However, the 1TB version of the 07000 has competition from one SSD in particular, Team Group's MP44 1TB, which uses the exact same hardware, but only costs $65. And considering that Team Group is more established in the SSD space, you might as well go with the MP44 and save $5 while you're at it. That being said, the 2TB model of the 07000 is currently going for $93, which is much cheaper than the $115 that you'd have to pay for the MP44 2TB. And even if we're not talking about the MP44, that's still a pretty good deal for a 2TB SSD with the level of performance that we see. So the 07000 1TB might not be worth picking up right now, but the 07000 2TB definitely is, though these prices are subject to change and with SSDs, they do change quite frequently. For its good overall performance and its ability to run coolly, we can recommend the 07000 as long as the price remains competitive. If you enjoyed our review and want to support the channel, then please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really like what we do, then check out our Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.